experts. We're connecting with you. This is Connect by 3 News. Happy Friday, everyone. Hello again and welcome into 3 News Connect with Monica Robbins. I'm Jay Crawford, still broadcasting from our home studios to keep you up to date on the very latest news concerning the coronavirus. And Monica, there is a lot of news coming up. Happy weekend is within reach to you, Monica. <laughs> We're close. <laughs> absolutely. We made it to another Friday. I'm so excited about that. And you're absolutely right, Jay. The information about COVID-19, it's constantly changing. So let me give you the latest developments. A program designed to help small businesses has literally run out of money. The Paycheck Protection Program that went through $349 billion in less than two weeks. Now it's up to Congress to inject more money into that program. In Illinois, the state will now start testing anyone who shows symptoms of COVID-19. They don't even need a doctor's order. And in New York, Governor Cuomo has extended the state's social distancing plan to May 15th. The Empire State, of course, has been the epicenter of the virus right here in the U.S. Meantime, this afternoon, frontline health care workers from the Cleveland Clinic left for New York City this morning. 25 volunteers are headed to New York Presbyterian after a request for caregivers, including critical care nurses, doctors, physician assistants, and technicians. And United Airlines donated the flights. Jay? Monica, that slight flicker of light at the end of the tunnel is beginning to get a little brighter. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine announcing yesterday our state could begin the journey to normal exactly two weeks from today, circling May 1st on the calendar as the target to begin rebooting our economy. But Laura Queso tells us there's still a whole lot to figure out. Mark your calendars. May 1st is the start date for Governor DeWine's economic restart plan. The rollout will happen in phases, starting with hospitals getting back to normal and those businesses able to provide a safe environment as essential businesses are now tasked to do. Large public gatherings will be the last thing we'll see again. The world that we're going to see is, is, is a different world and the world in the workplace is going to be different. Uh, you're going to see people with masks. You're going to see people where there's a lot of sanit sanitizers. We miss our customers. We miss our employees. Matt Harper, owner of Creekside Restaurant in Brexville, says he's already preparing for change once his doors open. All of our employees, when they come in, they have to fill out a form about how they're feeling. They get temped. Uh, their forehead gets temped. So we're already thinking about having uh, to move some tables out, move some chairs out in the bar to, to distance people. This is going to last until, until we're done with COVID. Uh, and until we, we have a vaccine. The governor also said he's working alongside other Midwest governors in an informal partnership to reopen the economy. If there's a spike, we could see a shutdown again. It is essential, though, that as we start back, we do this the right way. So keep doing what you're doing. Social distance, wash your hands, and wear a mask. It's our new normal. Masks made of different materials, different fabrics, with different stories behind them. The material was donated by um, a lovely young girl who has survived chemotherapy, and this, the actual ties were from, from a little tank top she would wear, um, I think when maybe she had to go get dialysis, actually. And I just want to say this, this was something given to me. It's precious in each one of these masks. I'm seeing you wear, the ones I'm seeing, um, even our media wear. Um, they're starting to have stories behind them. And here in Ohio, our story is one of moving forward. And while life will still look different, state leaders say it's a start. Right now, it's not clear what this means for Ohio's stay-at-home order or for the state's schools. The governor said he'll likely touch on that next week. Laura Queso, 3 News. All right, Laura, thank you very much. Following Governor DeWine's comments yesterday, President Trump then revealed his plans to reopen the economy, telling Americans there are three phases to that plan. The president said governors can move through the guidelines at their own pace, but first they need to meet a certain criteria. And here's what has to happen. It includes showing a downward trajectory of cases with the coronavirus like symptoms and positive tests over a 14 day period. Hospitals need to have the ability to treat all patients without crisis care and have a testing program in place 
for at-risk health care workers, and they must do antibody testing. If they meet these criteria, they then can move to phase one, and that means strict social distancing in public. No gatherings of more than 10 people. Non-essential travel is still discouraged, and if possible, people should continue to work from home. Also, when businesses do start recalling employees, they need to do so in phases. Now, if after implementing these guidelines and there is no spike in cases through phase one, governors can then take the program into phase two. Non-essential travel can begin again. Schools and organized youth activities can resume. Bars, gyms, churches, and large venues can reopen, but they still must maintain that proper social distancing and no more than 50 people at gatherings. Also, elective surgeries can resume. Then, if there are still no spikes in cases, the governors can move into phase three. That's with bars, gyms, and large venues reopening with limited social distancing and proper sanitation. Visits to senior care facilities and hospitals will resume at that point, but visitors and patients must be diligent with their hygiene. Monica? Well, the Greater Cleveland RTA is getting a big boost from the federal government. It was announced Thursday the agency will be getting $111 million in coronavirus relief funds. It comes as transit agencies across the country are seeing big revenue drops as a result of social distancing and stay-at-home orders. This funding will be used to protect jobs within the transit agency and to fund their paychecks. And two local companies, World Synergy and Block Buddy developed an app to help frontline healthcare workers treat coronavirus patients. And one of the big issues on the front line is determining quickly who may actually have COVID. And while the lab test is still the gold standard, there are other diagnostic tools that may be helpful on the front line. BlockBuddy Pro is a mobile reference app for anesthesia providers giving ultrasound-guided nerve blocks. When the pandemic happened, the Cleveland-based developer saw a need and updated the app with a reference guide for using lung ultrasound to check on patients. You can simply take this device, hook it up to our tablet or, and our phone, and within a matter of minutes, we can perform a scan at the patient's bedside. Now, in scanning the patient at the bedside, we can avoid transporting these patients down into the radiology department to have or receive a CT scan. Um, keep in mind that when we transport these patients through the hallways, that we are potentially exposing other healthcare providers and patients to the virus. The handheld ultrasound can be quickly cleaned and disinfected, unlike a CT scanner. Preliminary studies in Italy show ultrasound was helpful in picking up lung issues typical in COVID patients. But at this point, it cannot diagnose a case. Now, the app is a tool meant to be used in conjunction with other tests, and BlockBuddy also made their app free to download. And once downloaded, healthcare providers do not need internet access to use it. If you're interested, just go to myblockbuddy.com for more information. And after several first responders in Berea tested positive for coronavirus earlier this month, the fire department now has a new tool to help disinfect their equipment. The Rotary Club of Berea has donated a mobile disinfecting device. The equipment uses ultraviolet light to clean ambulances in five minutes or less. We got to take care of ourselves. We got to we got to protect ourselves, our guys, our equipment. Uh, this is a very good asset for us to have. We're very appreciative of the Rotary Club for spending the money on it. Now, the device can be used inside the station to clean where the firefighters live as well and will also be used by Berea police. Jay? Monica, patients are running thin for one business owner. The owner of Summit Motor Sports Park in Norwalk says despite governor's orders to shelter in place, he plans to reopen soon. He says he's doing this to avoid going out of business. It's a quarter-mile drag strip park in Norwalk. It hosts some of the largest annual racing events in Northeast Ohio every year. But, of course, like everything else, it is currently shut down because of the coronavirus. Owner Bill Bader has had to lay off staff and give up his own salary. But talking to Facebook Live, Bader said he plans to reopen whether or not state officials give him the okay. I don't want to be reckless. I don't want to be irresponsible. Um, 
but I have to survive. And there's nobody worried about me right now. This isn't a situation where I'm a greedy capitalist that's um, trying to make more money. I'm simply trying to survive. Bader said to help get his staff back on the job. He plans to announce some events next week. He hopes to run about 18 to 20 events this year, all where there can be social distancing and safety. Another local company, Giant Eagle, is converting into curbside pickup only. This Sunday, the Garfield Heights store is becoming a fulfillment center store only, meaning customers cannot go inside to shop. The store closes tonight at 9 p.m. You can start reserving your time slots today and orders can be picked up daily between 8 in the morning and 8 in the evening. Again, that starts this Sunday. Well, remember, we want to keep you up to date with all the latest facts on the coronavirus and its impact. And you can do that by simply sending a text to our number. Text the word facts to 216-344-3300. When you do that, all of the latest coronavirus headlines will be sent immediately to your phone. 3 News Connect is coming right back. Expecting a tax refund and have bills you just can't afford to pay. Look out the window and just shake your head. Yeah, believe it or not, April 17th in Erie and Huron counties, there is a winter weathery advisory in place. Let's take a live look outside. This is from Cedar Point. Oh my goodness, you can see, you can't see really. That's over in Sandusky. It's hard to even make out the roller coasters in this webcam. The snow we're dealing with mainly impacting areas along the lake shore. And take a look at this. People took advantage of yesterday's snowfall. Renee from Geauga County sent this one in, a snowman decked out in an Indian's cap. And if you have any pictures you'd like to share with us, please text them along with your name and a description to 216-344-3300. Oh, my goodness. Jay, you're going to be out there building a snowman, too, I'm sure. That is ridiculously depressing. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, considering that Major League Baseball should already be getting ready to go into its second month, and we look outside and there's that, and this is just crazy. Okay, moving along. Adjusting to the current situation has been challenging, and that's a major understatement. Just think about it here. Every single American's normal everyday life has been severely disrupted. And for families with special needs children who depend on that structure and routine of school every day, that disruption has been even greater. Danielle Wiggins shows us how our latest three hero is using yoga to give her students and their families a small sense of normalcy.
All right, go ahead and get comfortable, guys. This is Samantha Polchinski's virtual yoga class. Yoga in our classroom is one of the staples for our schedule. Polchinski, who is affectionately called Miss Sam, teaches a small group of students with special needs at Murray Ridge School in Elyria. She found that leading yoga classes with her students helped them regulate their emotions and be more aware of their body and mind. You're going to start to slow way down by the end of class. So when the coronavirus pandemic shut down schools, Miss Sam took her yoga class online. He perks up whenever he hears Miss Sam's voice. Alicia Pasno's 11-year-old son, Landon, is nonverbal and has numerous physical disabilities after surviving cancer twice before the age of three. Landon! Yeah, Landon looks alert and ready for class today. Although Landon needs someone to move his body into different yoga poses, his mother is brought to tears as she thinks about how Miss Sam makes sure her son is included. I was always worried about him being left out of things because he can't do those things. But she's really made it um, a point to make sure that he's involved in everything. Even online. Great job, Landon. She's the greatest teacher you could ever ask for. I can tell you that right now. Corinne Atkins says Miss Sam helped her 11-year-old son, Dorian, who is blind, grow academically and personally. Sam has never given up on him. And Dorian likes Miss Sam. Because I like to do yoga. It's really nice to have access and be able to meet with our kids, um, but obviously it's just still not the same, so we hope to get back to school soon. Danielle Wiggins, 3 News. Wow, Danielle, thank you very much. And Miss Sam, thank you very much for providing such an important service. Miss Sam's Wednesday and Friday yoga classes are designed specifically for children, but everybody is welcome to join and follow along. And we have information on our website, wkyc.com, on how you can participate in her amazing class. We want to see your heroes. Send us a photo and a brief description of your nominee. Someone like Miss Sam, who's helping Everybody get through a very difficult time right now. Text us the info to 216-344-3300. We want to share them on air. Again, text the photo, brief description, 216-344-3300. 3 News Connect is coming right back. After two weeks. Welcome back to 3 News Connect. Now is a great time to teach your kids more about being responsible. Now that they kind of have themselves to take care of in terms of getting to school online, 
We've heard a lot about keeping kids on that schedule, but we talked to a local psychologist who has a little bit of a different take. Carolyn Landis of University Hospitals says, while motivation and discipline are important, working with your kids and having a balance is also key. Schedules are also meant to be broken. Schedules are also meant to be played around with. And everybody is different in terms of what works for them. So I don't want everyone to feel like they have to follow the same schedule that they were following you know, when they were in school. Landa says, instead of regular schedules, set goals for kids to accomplish throughout the day. I think what you can do is come up with goals every day and try to figure out when is the best time for kids to work. And then for parents to check in about questions or also for kids to have little study groups. I've heard of some kids do that where they call friends and they work on some things together. So that also breaks up the day. She also says your kid's sleep is an important part of keeping them alert and responsible. Monica? Well, it has been more than a month since we've been sheltering at home, and that means no more trips to the salon for a while. But help is on the way. Lindsay Buckingham shows us a few creative ways to keep your hair looking fresh. Ah, uh, the old mudslide. Nope, not this kind. <laughs> This kind. We know it's not a gripping topic, but the fact is our roots are growing and we've had to take our hair care into our own hands. So we tapped Nicole Wheeler, co-owner of Studio 6A in Westlake, for a few ways to cover and embrace our new look. First up, dry shampoo. First would be using a dry shampoo, which is going to help soften your root and it's going to help like that dark, um, kind of greasy feel because that's the first to go when you're a blonde. There is a darker tone for brunettes by Moroccan oil. So this will have a darker shade to it versus the light powder. Next, let's work on that mudslide with a root kit. Color Wow has platinum. So what you can do is with this brush, this will give you the illusion of a blonde highlight. So people that have like right in the front where it's like really making you crazy, you just follow your highlight line. You have dark hair and you want to cover up your gray. Don't be afraid to switch up that hair. Their recommendations are going to be different styles mm -hmm. to get yourself through. So this, we kind of just hold the hair up into with some pins. This is it. Put some pins in. And then if you have roots, you just need to worry about this and not your whole part line. The other option is you have headbands. This is the Lindsay, by the way. <laughs> But if you have headbands, this is gonna like help get you through. Finally, this is a great time to wear our roots proudly. Who knew this look was on trend? That's the nice thing about what's happening in color trends right now is everything's a modern color. So it's a little bit brighter around the front, but that rooty look is popular. It might be like everyone's new style. Lindsay Buckingham, 3 News. Oh, just call it an ombre lens. All right, another great tip. If you don't have a root cover up, Nicole Wheeler says an eyeshadow. Yeah, an eyeshadow could actually do the trick. We want to see your home haircuts. Send us the good, the bad, and the ugly. Just text us the pictures to 216-344-3300. We might just put them on the air. WKYC and the Cleveland Indians are working together to raise money for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Northeast Ohio. And last night was our big fundraiser. And thanks to you, we were able to raise nearly $75,000 to help the Boys and Girls Club. And you can still help. It's really simple. All you have to do is just go to our website, WKYC.com. There's a link at the top of our homepage for you to donate. Stay with us. We'll reconnect after the break.
Welcome back to 3 News Connect. Before we get ready to go, here are the three coronavirus headlines that have people talking. A warning from the FDA to not use animal heartworm drug Ivermestin to treat coronavirus. Also, Jacksonville, Florida, trying to get back to normal. Beaches and parks will begin reopening today. And local favorite Swenson's is giving back. They're feeding frontline workers at Akron Children's Hospital today. You can find these headlines and much more over on our website, WKYC.com. Also, those stories are available on our app. And set an alarm for tomorrow night. Some of your favorite celebrities are having a virtual concert right here on Channel 3. This should be very cool. It's all to show support for medical workers on the front lines battling COVID-19. The concert is called One World at Home Together. It's hosted by, get this, the three late night network show hosts, Jimmy Fallon, Stephen Colbert, and Jimmy Kimmel. Normally competitors teaming up for a good cause. The concert airs at 8 p.m. It will air around the world. Monica? Oh, that's great. I can't wait to watch that. Hey, local Girl Scouts are left with a lot of cookies, and we're talking about 300,000 boxes. Their annual cookie sale came right as the coronavirus hit Northeast Ohio, and the local cha chapter is teaming up with unique ways to get the Thin Mints and Samoas in the right hands. We've had a lot of people do a lot of different things this year in order to move the cookies that are there. We're gonna work through this together. We don't want any individual family or anybody to be um, paying for this out of their pocket. We don't want to bankrupt any troops. So Girl Scouts have started a cookie relief fund where people can donate cookies to first responders. That's it for us, everybody. Have an awesome weekend and we will see you on Monday. We'll be back at 5 o'clock with What's New. Betsy Kling and the 3 News team will join me then. Monica, have a great weekend. You two at home. Bye-bye.